Welcome to the Nav Viking tutorials. I'm Johannes Goodmanson, founder of Anecta, a Microsoft Dynamics NAV Gold certified partner. Hello and welcome to the Coffee Mug tutorials. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to keep going in Power BI. Yes, we are outside Business Central, NAV, and all that. We're inside Power BI. Why? Because Power BI is basically the reporting tool for Business Central and uh, or to a certain extent, at least the visualization of business intelligence. And I had actually been working on cash flow analysis. And uh, in here, you can actually see that that we have cash flow uh, by due date, or actually by cash flow date from the cash flow module. And if you if you're jumping into these videos or video series, uh, please watch the previous videos on that. So you can see how we actually created this chart. But uh, if you're new to this, basically what we did is we brought in tables from Business Central into Power BI. Uh, and we actually, uh, or these are web services. And we connected that to this chart right here. Um, and I can actually see the net change by date. And then I had to do a quick measure to get the, uh, the running total. So which was kind of the trick there. So what I want to do now is go, well, actually in Business Central, you can kind of filter out what part is payable, what part is receivable, what part is liquid assets. Um, and so I want to be able to filter that in a running total. So it's, it should be very easy to filter that with actually here. So for example, let me show you. If I go in here, uh, get a table, and I am actually using this uh, cash flow account, and I show the name, I can see all the cash flow accounts that are in here. Um, actually, if I make that a slicer, then I can check off uh, anything I wanna see. So if I wanna see receivables, you can see that that changed right here. I'm just looking at receivables like so. Um, and if I want to see payables, uh, I can see that coming here. But let's say if, and so this is all, the entire graph is affected by that. But let's say I want to see the payables as on this graph as well, as well as the top line here, all accumulated. So I can't do that with only this because Whenever I click, then it just takes that. It shows me only that. It doesn't show me both, right? And there's really no way to do that because I'm filtering everything. Um, so basically what I want to do is instead of filtering this graph, I want to create another accumulating line here that is only looking at, for example, uh, receivables. Let's say that. So how do I do that? So that's a good question. Um, and I'm going to actually go here into page two uh, just to show you how the data works and click on here, uh, put a table. Uh, and in this table, I'm going to actually pick the uh, cash flow date and the amount just to show you. Right. So here I have the amount and the cash flow date. Um, so these are all the dates and here we have the amounts for the dates. And I also want to see the running total. So notice here, the running total is actually not running. Why is that? It's because you have to change the cash flow date to not show date hierarchy, but the actual cash flow date right here. If I do that, all of a sudden it works, right? <laughs> so it's a little uh, very, very interesting trick here. Uh, so best, best to make note of that. Um, at the same time, if I bring in my slicer right here and I actually just show the name like it was before. And now if I filter on that, let's say receivables, which was one of the things that I wanted to see. Now I can see how only the receivables are here and you can see how it accumulates. Now, so what I want to do is have a third column here which, so I show the amount, I show the running total, and then I want to show a running total of the receivables, only receivables, in a third column here, along with this column. Okay, so how do I do that? 
I need to create another measure. So we're going to go in here uh, and say new quick measure. And let me just close this out here. Um, right here. And it says, OK, select the calculation. And I'm going to do another running total. Running total exactly the same way as I did it before. Pick the amount and pick the cash flow date. All right, that. All right, so here in this quick like drag and drop, I can't do exactly what I need. I need actually to add to this statement. What this does here, it basically just builds a DAX formula for me. Um, so I'm going to just do that and actually build this. OK, this looks like code and it is code. So um, what I'm going to do now is add to that code. So right now it's summing the amount on this filter right here, which is on the dates, right? Um, and I want to add another filter. So all I have to do is just do a comma filter. And here I'm actually going to do all selected because all selected means that it works within the filtering of that which is you know the running total uh, and then I'm going to pick the cash flow account actually which is that table which I'm actually filtering on the top table and then I pick the name column Oops. Uh, let me just do this like this is equal to and I hope I'm doing this right. Cash flow account. I am not. I have to close this out like this. There we go. And that is equal to, uh, let's see, let's see what this, like that. Okay. So now I have a new account, uh, a new quick measure here, which is receivables. Uh, if I actually, let me see click on this here and I am going to add it right here. I should get it over here. If I can close this. Um, now I have a running total, which is a total. And then I have a running total, which is should be the receivables. And how can I make sure that this is the receivables? All I have to do is filter here on receivables and it should match up and it does. You can see that the running total filtered on receivable matches the receivable. So now it works. That's great. So I can actually just add this to this table here. Uh, I can just click on this and now I have the red line here, which is showing me the receivables, just the receivable part. So I can see how the receivable goes up. And then you can, of course, do this for payables. You can do this for liquid assets uh, or liquid funds and other things. So Power BI. Cool. All right. Um, if you like this, thumbs up, please. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Until next time.